to prep the skin i spray isopropyl alcohol and then i follow up with water i clean up very well to remove the excess oil then i use the water to remove the alcohol because actually it's the alcohol that i use to dissolve the glue so you don't want any remnant of alcohol there then i'll follow up with got to be glue to control the small hair on her edges i brush it appropriately to lay it flat enough so that it won't come in my way when i'm installing the frontal next is wearing my stocking cap i use this stocking cap to actually create a border it helps me know where um, the limit of my glue application that's one of the reasons of the stocking cap then to glue the stocking cap i spray my got to be blast spray after i've opened a hole on the ear area opening that hole ensures that the the part of that ear lays flat if you leave it on top of the ear the ear will make it not lay flat i then go in with my rubber band to ensure that it sticks other reasons for the stocking cap is most especially to to protect the hair and to create a scalp like base so after tying that rubber i leave it in situ while i stitch the stocking cap i start from the middle to stitch the uh, stocking cap down to the ear area then i complete it the other side starting from the middle again and down to the ear area i hope you understand that will be the same method that we will use when we are um, stitching the frontal while doing all that our got to be blasting spray will be drying i don't even need to use a hand dryer it's uh, drying while i'm doing what i'm doing after stitching i go in with my foundation it's actually a mixture of foundation and concealer i try to achieve a foundation color that one shade darker than the client why that one shade darker than the client ensures that the, the when you pat the frontal it looks like the client's skin color generally a lot of people's scalp are a shade darker than their facial skin that's the reason an experience has taught me that it's better that way when you take the person's foundation color it does make the scalp look white so after i've already done that i go ahead to cut off the excess cap this really takes quite some time you take your time carefully while you're doing your your trimming of the excess cap the stocking cap also protects the hairline taking care not to cut the client's hair or her skin some stylists use razor blade i'm scared about razor blade because um, I no matter how careful I am sometimes I cut the client so I never use razor blade when I'm cutting off any lace on the client's body after I'm done trimming off the excess lace I go ahead to bleach the knots on the frontal oh, that's not the typical way of bleaching <laughs> I went in with exactly that same foundation color that I used on that stocking cap on the frontal. The problem with bleach is that over the years, bleach tends to make the hair pull. So I no longer bleach my knots. I use found and when I'm applying the foundation on it, I use the brush to dab. Now I went in to fit the, the frontal. I had done it before all these procedures but i went back again to fit the frontal onto the client's scalp so i went back again with my isopropyl alcohol to ensure that no oil from anywhere whether the foundation or the concealer goes into my ins and i went in with water you want to make sure that that nothing comes that no alcohol is left 
before you put on your glue it will make your glue not to last so i do my fitting 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 then i go ahead to carve out the shape of the ear you have to be careful here so that you won't cut your client's ear you must do this with utmost concentration and focus so that you won't cut off excess hair see how i put that hair up if you let the hair down you're going to cut some length of hair and you wouldn't want that to happen so you put the hair opposite the direction of your cotton so that any one you cut off you won't cut the length of the hair of other hair that you didn't intend to cut i hope you understand <laughs> english is not my first language so what i do on the right ear i do on the left ear so because this wig was made by someone else i had to um tack the rubber band because it was flying about to be able to anchor it on my client's hair i then continued to carve the ear area to get the shape of the client's ear now this is a frontal wig before i place my bold hold extreme I secure it I tack it down I stitch it this install was meant to last at least one week some clients that abide to the maintenance carry it more than three weeks so I position the wig appropriately and then stitch from the middle down to the ear if you stitch the other way we are going to shift it so after positioning it and making it take a proper shape on the client's hair i will stitch from the middle down to the ear and stop then stitch the other side the left side from the middle down to the ear and stop before i go ahead to tack the to tack the rest of the wig onto the client's hair from the, the side through the back to the other side now it's very important take note that you must stitch from the middle to the ear on the right stitch from the middle to the ear on the left before you start going around just the way i am doing now so that your frontal will not shift after your positioning after your stitching you move your frontal backward to reveal the stocking cap on the left. You can see the border of the stocking cap. What do you want to do on the week? Take your glue and start your application. What? The glue that I'm using is going to it. The tool I'm using for the application is my tweezer. Why the tweezer? The tweezer is metallic and very smooth and helps for easy application. I'm going to go three applications now this is very important if you want a seamless bleaching powder installation uh, when i pick the glue i use i don't understand what you mean by that, that. What, what would you use it to, the tweezer to smooth it into the skin gentle smoothing don't be harsh is it to apply the on the lace it into the skin no, I'm not the leaving any okay, area that you where use the glue is thicker than the other side okay flatten yes, it as you Take note, flattening it as you go. Don't leave a heap of glue when you are applying it. Applying the first layer, as you are doing it, you can see the first one I applied has already disappeared. You wouldn't want to bring out a lot of glue that will dry out on you. As we all know, bold hold lace glue and bold hold extreme is co quite costly. So when I'm done with my first application, I continue with the second application. Try your best not to apply beyond where your frontal has been adjusted so that you won't run a risk of trying to pull or tear out the glue. Before you apply your second glue, make sure that it's dry. Do you know it's dry? It turns from white to clear. Make sure all whiteness have cleared so behind the scenes i did the third coating so after application i put my frontal down and then start putting little pressure step by step 
for each part of my um for i continue doing that until i'm satisfied then i tie a rubber band to secure it after taking down the rubber band i'll now gently cut the lace it's better you undercut than you overcut so cut close to the hairline but not so deep i'm trying to give a front shape a um a hairline shape to this frontal because whoever ventilated this frontal made it into a straight line and we all know that naturally no, most people don't have a straight hairline when you are trimming off the excess lace you don't trim in a straight line you go in a zigzag manner zigzag little little zigzag manner after trimming of the major lace you you continue trimming extra lace all over the front be careful not to trim her edges also be careful not to over trim the lace most of the time the glue does not catch every part of the lace you take care of that you lift can you see what i'm doing you try lifting it gently then you will now see the extra part of the lace that was not glued. I went in with a tiny object like um, I wanted to go in with a needle so that I won't apply extra glue. But um, the tweezer still served the purpose because it's a flat object. Do the same procedure. You apply the first phase, flatten it. Then allow it to turn clear like water colorless then you apply the second one flatten it don't leave it into bulk flatten it you can see I dropped it there then I'm going to use my smooth tweezer surface to flatten it that's it until you are done with your three layers and when it dries you you you'll be careful so that the um, glue will not touch your lace. Once it dries, you go in again with, I used my clip, it's flat. And it, it helps me put the, the level of pressure that I want. So after I was done with that middle part, I saw that there was another place that didn't take on glue. So I'll still go back in there and do exactly the same. You can see that the lace looks like it's coming directly from her scalp. That's the idea. My earlier trimming of the ear, ear area of the lace left me with excess. 
as I said before, it's better you have excess than you overcut. So I was able to trim it to mimic her earbud area. After which I applied glue, taking note of the shape of the earbud lace area list and applying the glue there I don't want to cross the line you wouldn't want to cross the line and then leaving glue bare outside the lace it can make the client tempted to try to pull it therefore spoiling your handwork so after it dries I'll put pressure there this is what I'm going to do throughout her whole face from ear to ear and when I'm done I'll use a rubber band to secure it to keep it in place before the rubber band however my client asked for baby hair so i just brought out the ones i'm going to trim to give her a befitting baby hair i still went in with that foundation that you knew because i saw some areas that were whitish you can see how it's turning into her scalp so beautiful make sure you don't pick a lot of products when you are applying that you pick you drop can you see that you pick the foundation then you clean it off a little tap it off a little in another area then dab with the little remaining in the brush so that you won't put so much product there see how it blends into her skin see how it look, it's looking like her scalp so i tie it up after the baby hair then while waiting for my glue to stick I'll try to um, lay the to control the fly about with my wet hair wax then I'll go in with my hot comb the frontal is was made by synthetic and it was matte, so I was being careful she was also given some form of uh, mousse for the weave on and even after applying it it was still matting together it wasn't helpful apparently she was deceived and sold the quality of hair that she didn't plan for When I was done with the back, I went into the baby hair to trim it off a little. Just like when trimming your lace, you should also be careful not to over trim. So you can actually start with medium length, then you can now go in to give it the desired length that you want. Gentle and gradually is the idea. When I was done with the trimming, oh, just look at the blending. It just looks like a scalp. I went in with my news to lay the baby hair. I just learned how to use mousse for my baby hair because it makes the baby hair not to be sticky and not to be stiff. So it's quite some struggle to actually lay baby hair with mousse, but we did it. After laying your baby hair, you you sure should tie it with a band. Then while waiting for the baby hair to set, I went in to sort of pack the hair. I wanted to make it easier for my client to carry because she can't comb it. So while tugging on the wig, you need to tie up the edges. So that's it. I hope you this was educative. I hope you learned something. If you have questions, ask me in the comment section. Until next time.
This is me saying cheers and thanks for all your support. If you've not liked, shared, subscribed, please do so so that I'll be encouraged. Bye.